Okay, so let's first uh, configure some stuff in our scene. So for example, we are going to need the pyro for some stuff, but uh, we have this volume VOP here that we used. Um, we might not necessarily want to use this for rendering. I, I don't think I, I'm not sure if I used it for my final pyro render. You know, that what was the one that we used to sort of uh, change the heat. But let's say we do want to render this, but in the viewport, right, it's super slow if we're gonna scrub. So maybe what we want to do is let's make a null and call this uh, render. Copy and paste one and then do another one and just connect it over there and call this view. And then let's keep the, um, oh, keep, keep it bug, like that bug keeps happening. It's super annoying. Side effects, fix it, please. Okay, so view. Uh, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna uh, control click on the view icon on there. So that will make this purple. And that will mean that in the viewport, we're gonna see this one, but it's gonna render this one. So we can just go out of it so that it will be still be relatively fast. We could even turn it off by the way. I mean, we don't necessarily need to see it in the viewport, but still might make a little bit of sense because I'm still not sure if I'm completely happy with the camera. Uh, but I mean, in your own scene, really just like tweak it, to change your camera. Um, maybe I'm still, I'm gonna move it a little bit backward. Maybe. I'm gonna start a little bit further out, I think. So now that. Okay. Yeah, okay, that's probably better. Okay, so we have that thing. Uh, so it's a little bit slow, so let's hide a whole bunch of stuff. Oh, that's the steam that making it slow, probably. So let's turn off the steam sim. We can turn the ground back on. Need to probably make this box a little bit back bigger because It's getting slow, it's getting hard to navigate. You could make multiple network boxes, I guess, as well, but here, let's do the terrain. So it's scattered rocks. Let's put them up in. We could view them as points, you know, a little bit slow, so something like that. And we're gonna have a feel. So, okay, so let's just configure our ROPs. Okay, so on our terrain, I mean, we already have a whole bunch of stuff set up for the most part, right? But let's give everything proper names. So call this terrain. So then set up. And of course, because we have this, this thing here, it should already end up in the correct folder, which will be our file to flip tutorial. And so this, that's going to be the root folder. So that's this thing that we set here, so that's a root folder. And it's gonna go into the render folder of that and then 3D and then the shot name. And then whatever we put there. So if we had multiple shots, then it would also be split up like that. So that's the way, that's why that's uh, set up like that. So let's um, add everything in there. So we already have, we have the debris, that, that we want that. We have rocks explode, scattered rocks, that's good. Small rocks terrain. Okay, so that looks like we already have what we want. So one thing that we don't have yet is we need to add a phantom. So the phantom is going to be the pyro. So that's going to be the RDR pyro. So if we put it in phantom, what it will do is it will still be used for the uh, global illumination. It just won't see the explosion. So let's try that out for uh, for a second. So let's just make a render view like that. Let's click here and then say that we want to render our terrain. That's gonna load our object. Okay. So that's super bright. So I think we probably have a light that's a little bit extreme and some reason I'm not sure why it was doing a bucket render. Let's turn off bucket rendering. 
Okay, now it's progressive rendering. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn off our volumetric scattering because we don't need that. And we have a whole bunch of stuff here that's too light. Okay, so let's see where that's come, coming from. So let's go in here. Yeah, okay. So yeah, I think in uh, pre in the when we were doing the sh when I was doing the shockwave recording, I think I cranked this up because I was having some issues with that. Okay, so let's make that a, a lot lower. If my keyboard wants to actually have me do it. Yeah, so that's something that, that we had. So we're getting this explosion. Let's go along into time a little bit. See, we already get this motion blur. So we just need to check how much illumination we get. Alternatively, what you could do is if you want more illumination, but your pyro is looking good. So for example, if you just wanted more illumination on the ground here, because we don't really use a light for it, we cannot really tweak the light, but there's multiple things that we could do to uh, sort of set it up that it would um, sort of increase the, uh, the, light, well, the, the light on the ground. So one way would be to copy and paste your render pyro and say, that it would be pyro terrain. And then we could assign a different material to that. So that would be sort of the brute force way. Another way, which would probably be a little bit more clean to sort of do it, is let's say we make a take. So takes will allow you to sort of set up differences uh, for, for example, different drops or just different settings inside your scene. I don't use them that much, but they can be definitely be useful. So our main take is what we're working in right now. Let's say we want to do a override. So let's first make a material and um, we have our pyro. Now uh, we can, maybe we don't even need to do that. Okay, so let's just make a take. Call this environment render. Okay, and for some reason it didn't name it. Okay, now we did. So what we can then do is on our out, we can say with this thing, uh, we need to go back to our main take. So you can see everything gets grayed out when we switch to that. We can say render with take environment. Okay, and then we, when we go into environment, everything is grayed out. So we cannot change any settings. It's because it's taking its settings from the main, the main take. And this is a, a child of the main take. But in that thing, we can actually go into a different network. So we could go in here, go in the volume, see everything is grayed out in here as well. But we could say that we want, in this specific take, we want to right click, for example, on the emission scale and say include in take and then make it a lot higher. So if we go back to the main take, it's 100. If you go here, it's 300. So that means it's going to have more emission on the environment. But apart from that, it's going to be exactly the same. So we can just go back here. So you can see this is set to render with take environment. So if I were to go in here now, press render. We get a lot more emission on the ground. So if we were to go put this back to main, let's make a change. Yeah, it's actually not that much different. Let's really crank it up maybe, and we can actually see a difference. Let's go to material, environment, material, 5,000, right? Oh, I environment, let's try again.
Okay, now we can sort of see a difference, right? So if we go near, so that was original. This is with T5. So you can see it's a shelly putting a lot more light there. So if we were to put this to, so let's make another screenshot. If we were to put this back to the main take, um, probably need to reload. screenshot so you can see this is with the new take this is with the other take so in that case we don't need to change any of our notes we just include it in a take and then we get a lot more light uh, this is obviously a little bit too extreme but that was just to sort of show uh, the thing but that's how you can sort of do an override for just a specific rob and this also works for simulations and other stuff like that by the way if you were to make a uh, uh, geometry out, for example, a geometry drop here. Um, render with take, you can also do that. And you can use this to, for example, cash out a simulation and you can do a different take in the simulation. So takes are super useful. Uh, I really should use them more often. I, I only use them very occasionally, but they're super useful. So let's uh, change our, change it, make it a little bit less extreme. Let's turn this off. Okay, so with that out of the way, we have covered takes. And then, so now we can, if we want to change the intensity of our light on our environment, we do that in here. So that's for this thing. Okay, so now let's cover some other stuff that we need to cover for in order to render this. So let's see. Which lights do we want to use? We want to use all lights. All of that other stuff is set up correctly. Maybe we want to, well, we don't want the force lights, we want to probably. Also, if you want to, for example, um, what, what's also useful if you're working, for example, if, if candidate lights will only render lights that are sort of turned on, if you force lights, uh, it's the same as with force objects. Another thing that I sometimes use is uh, before my lights, I type RSL underscore whatever. And then you could say, for example, RSL underscore star, and then it would only render those. You could also say terrain, for example, terrain key. And then you could, for example, say underscore star, and then it would only include the lights for our terrain. But in this case, we don't really need that. Uh, because we're generally going to use most of the lights everywhere. But just a quick little tip. Okay, so we need to set up some settings here and we also need to set up some AOVs. So let's do the set up the AOVs first because that will allow, uh, allow us to sort of tweak the settings of, uh, um, of our ROP.